Hey, this is Scott, and today I'm going to talk a bit about the newest software from Alien Skin, Exposure X3. So there's been a lot of talk about Lightroom CC lately, and although I do have Lightroom CC packaged together with Photoshop, I moved over to Capture One for raw processing a couple of years ago and haven't looked back. Recently, I did try out Capture One styles, and while they were kind of fun to work with, I didn't see it as a workflow that fit with how I've been using Capture One personally. When I saw the announcement of Exposure X3, the newest software from the very well-known company Alien Skin, I was extremely interested. Alien Skin was kind enough to let me test it out, and helped me quite a lot to get started and really get a feel for their new software. While I do greatly appreciate all their support, I promise to keep this an objective review. If you've used Exposure X2, X3 may look pretty much identical on the surface, but there have been a good amount of updates. While a lot are beneath the surface, there are some cool new features like being able to add keywords and a dedicated black and white slider in the basic panel. Something like this is simple but very, very useful. The ability to add watermarks is also new and their quick export settings are in general very, very useful. If you're new to Exposure, there's a lot similar to Lightroom and there's also a lot similar to Capture One. One thing that's totally unique though is the file system. This will probably take some getting used to, and when you first get in here you might be thinking, how do I get my photos in here? But you actually don't. While you can import your files from a card using Exposure, you don't have to. And they'll be stored in normal folders in your hard drive wherever you want to store them, not in catalogs or sessions which are specific to Exposure. All your edits will be stored in the small sidecar files in the folder together with your images, not affecting the original files, so you can move your folders around freely and never have to worry about relinking files or having to move them using the Exposure interface. The ease and freedom to move files around with sessions in Capture One was and still is one of my favorite features, so I'm glad that this is present in Exposure as well. To actually find your files in X3, just go up to the Folders tab and find where you have them stored. You'll see them loaded into X3 immediately and you can get to work, no import necessary. X3 can also read PSD files, but it won't load your layers. Since X3 can be used as a plugin with Photoshop, I see that as a more logical workflow when you have PSD files. When you do choose that route, you'll have pretty much the identical capabilities of the standalone program. You'll just merge your layers onto a new layer and choose the Alien Skin plugin. Make your edits and apply them, and you'll see a new layer with those adjustments right on top. If you want to change this, just delete the layer and apply the filter again. Your settings inside the X3 plugin should still be there. I'll definitely be using this workflow to put some finishing artistic touches on images from now on. Something that I liked about Lightroom, which is a bit more difficult in Capture One, is the ability to link side-by-side -side images for comparison when culling. In X3, you can set your layout to vertical, click Link Views, and you're good to go. What's more is you can do this in multiple configurations and compare up to four shots at a time. You can also do this while comparing multiple presets too, or you can create virtual copies to have multiple versions without taking up more disk space. One more very cool feature similar to Capture One, but implemented just a bit differently, is the layers. You are able to add layers and masks in Capture One, but I find that those in X3 are much more similar to Photoshop, which are pretty much the standard for that kind of workflow. In the top right corner, you'll always start off from layer one, where you can make some basic edits or leave it as your background for safety. Simply click Add Layer to add more, and everything you do will be added on that new layer. You can add a preset on one, fine tune it, and then add a vignette on another, adjust the tone curve on another, and never have to worry about your adjustments interfering with the work you've already done. If you mess something up and you want to go back, just reset or delete that layer and try again. You can also add masks to these using linear and radial gradients as well as with a brush. Of course, you can create a mask from color selections and other cool things in Capture One, but in terms of an intuitive but easy workflow, this is great. Of course, you can also toggle each layer on and off to see what you've done more easily. Once you get into actually editing an image, there are a lot of panels in here, but you can totally customize them and move them around by right-clicking and choosing Customize Panels. On the left, you'll see an endless list of presets, from film stocks to color effects to bokeh effects. These all make adjustments in the tabs on the right, so you can get a good starting point and then go finely tune the individual parameters very easily. This workflow makes X3 amazing for getting really artistic results that may take hours to build from scratch or you might not even come up with otherwise. All the effects like grain, bokeh, and flare are very realistic and nice looking too, 
although a bit heavy handed off the bat so you'll probably want to go tone them down a bit after finding something close to what you want. You can even see previews of the presets as you scroll through them so it's easy to find something you might like and then as you hover over it you can see it again in the main window without having to actually apply it. I really can't say enough about these presets. They're seriously the best I've ever seen and they range from subtle to heavy handed and kind of ugly to be honest but I do really feel confident that you could find something which will work for any kind of look. Of course you don't always need to use a preset because not every situation calls for that type of look but you still have all the standard controls and tools that you would find in other applications to work with as well. Taking a look at those controls I'll focus on the things which are most unique and interesting to me but let's go over some of these tabs on the right side here. Your basic tab will have all your basic adjustments but I do have a couple of comments here. The temperature tab is ranging from 0 to 100, not actual color temperatures like you'll see in Capture One, and honestly I kind of don't like that. It's not going to stop me from getting good results and you do still have a color picker for setting your white balance but I've gotten used to seeing actual numbers. One nice thing is that holding the option key while sliding some of these like the white slider will show you a mask of where you're blowing out your highlights or crushing your blacks. I found this really helpful in Lightroom and the only workaround in Capture One is to turn on your highlight warnings and watch those as you raise your levels. The color tab will let you add some overall color filters or adjust the saturation to individual channels or the shadows, midtones, and highlights separately which is very nice. Your vignette tab will give you a lot more control over the vignette than either Lightroom or Capture One. You can choose from a preset and then fine tune it or build yours from scratch adjusting the amount, size, roundness, softness, distortion, lump size and what's really useful is adjusting the location. The effect of some of these settings like distortion and lump size is easiest to see by playing around with it instead of explaining it so I recommend you check it out. Overlays are where you'll find things like borders, light effects, and textures. While the borders are something I'll probably never use, light effects and textures can be a lot of fun. You can adjust the parameters of each of these as well as the blend mode, opacity, and don't forget you can paint masks onto the layer that you apply these in as well. The grain tab will let you have a lot of control over the artistic film style grain in your image. Most of the presets, especially the film emulations, will apply some grain so if you'd like to fine tune it or turn it off, this is where you'll do that. Bokeh is another cool tab that could be useful in certain shots. As with all the other settings, you can build something from scratch, in this case using a radial or linear gradient style control, together with sliders, or you can start from a preset. Those presets can even emulate the bokeh of popular lenses. Remember that these are typically applied pretty heavily to start so dialing them back and fine tuning them can get some very nice results. I also want to make a note about the lens correction tab because as of now this will only correct for lens distortion, but I've been told that chromatic aberration and vignette correction is coming in the future. If your lens has some serious problems in those areas, remember that you can use X3 as a plugin with Photoshop to get the same artistic results after you've corrected those issues with other software. You can also toggle all of these tabs on and off just like you can with the layers to see before and after of each individual section. Simply pressing the spacebar will also give you an overall before and after comparison. So some final comments. The speed of this isn't terrible and it isn't great. I'm used to Capture One which is incredibly fast even when zooming into 100% and scrolling around so I'm probably spoiled though. But the great thing about this is that you can also use it as a plugin with Photoshop simply for applying their amazing presets without the speed really causing any issues, and that's how I plan to use it personally. Overall, I'm still in love with Capture One for raw processing, but X3 is now incredibly powerful as a standalone program. It does nearly everything that other more commonly used raw processors do, plus it has the amazing, best I've ever seen really, presets for film and artistic effects. On top of that, you have the option to use all of that as a plugin with Photoshop, so processing in Capture One and then getting my final look with X3 after retouching in Photoshop is extremely easy. Whichever workflow you choose, I'd have absolutely no problem recommending this 110% and after talking with the guys over at Alien Skin personally, I'm completely confident that they will overcome the things which could use improving in the near future. Well, this wasn't a complete run through of the endless amount of things that X3 does have to offer, I hope it was at least a little bit educational, but if you have any further questions please don't hesitate to ask down in the comments below. If you did like this video, I'd love it if you guys gave me a thumbs up, subscribe to see more in the future, and as always, thank you for watching.